everybody, and thank you for joining me for this edition of A Look Back. I'm Mike, and do we have a packed show today? We're going to take a look back at SummerSlam 2023 from Ford Field Stadium in Detroit, Michigan. We'll play a look back with Mike Trivia, and also we're going to take a look at the upcoming ASW Summer Heat, oh baby, coming up this weekend, August 12, 2023 in Madison, West Virginia. Starting with SummerSlam 2023, Ford Field Stadium on August the 5th, 2023. It was the 36th annual event, the first SummerSlam in Michigan since 1993 at the Palace of Auburn Hills in Auburn Hills, Michigan. The attendance, according to WWE, for this event was around 59,194 people at the show. Highest grossing SummerSlam event on record at $8.5 million at the gate and $7 million in sponsorships. The Bianca Belair LA Night uh, Slim Jim commercial was really something that hit home for me. I am a huge Macho Man Randy Savage uh, fan, and you saw the flashbacks of the old Macho Man commercials during that commercial, and it was, it was really nostalgic. I really liked it. On the card, in no particular order, you know, the card itself was okay. However, I don't understand what WWE was thinking. When they dropped Rhea Ripley versus Raquel Rodriguez and a possible Trish Stratus versus Becky Lynch match in favor for some of the stuff they had on the card. Opening up, you had Logan Paul versus Ricochet. Of course, Logan Paul defeating Ricochet. It was an okay, and it sets up a long-running feud. David incorporated Ricochet's fiance WWE ring announcer, Samantha Irvin. Uh, that could actually be something that would work to the advantage of WWE because it brings a sense of realism into the storyline. Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. Of course, uh, that was a good match. You saw some back and forth between Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar. It was their third encounter. Uh, Cody finally getting his due and his respect from Brock Lesnar. Of course, it sets up a return match for WrestleMania 40 between Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar. Not Brock Lesnar. I am so sorry. Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. We'll get to him later. You had L.A. Knight winning the Slim Jim Battle Royale. He's kind of been Slim Jim spokesman, so to let him win the Battle Royale didn't really shock me until almost made his entrance. And then, you know, it got a little hairy for a minute, but of course, L.A. Knight coming out on top of that, it really didn't, uh, like I said, it didn't shock me, but he deserved the win. But where does he go from now? I know the Bray Wyatt feud really did not help his cause. You had Shayna Baszler defeating Ronda Rousey in an MMA rules match. All right, here's where you're going to see me get on a soapbox. I'm not a fan of either one of the women. However, if you are going to have an MMA rules match, especially when two competitors have an MMA background, do me a huge favor and get a referee in there that has some clue of what he's doing. That referee, obviously, I, feel, I kind of felt sorry for him, but then again, I don't know. Uh, it's one of those situations when he called the doctors in, had that been a real MMA match under real MMA rules, they'd have stopped the fight immediately. You could tell both of the women were kind of a little bit thrown off by that. But this is definitely one of those situations where I'd have much rather saw Rhea Ripley and Raquel Rodriguez hook it up instead of this. And trust me, it would have been better. Gunther defeating Drew McIntyre for the Intercontinental title. Guys, Gunther is on track to beating Honky Tonk Man's record, like him or not. He has potential, and more than this, he actually wrestles better as he progresses, and he is going to become something great. Seth Rollins defeating Finn Balor for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. With the misstep by Balor, could darker days be brewing for the Judgment Day? Uh, Priest obviously was attempting to draw the attention of the referee, and Balor come up short on the briefcase, took the curb stomp to the head. Uh, you know why didn't Priest cash it in though before he left? I don't know. There's probably something going to come up out of that. Bianca Belair defeating Charlotte Flair and Oscar for the WWE Women's World Title. All right, guys, here is another thing that gets me. Triple threat matches for championships. I don't see it working, namely because, in my opinion, it takes away from the champion. Because in a triple threat match, the champion doesn't necessarily have to be pinned to lose the title. Kind of a little bit iffy on me, but hey. Then after the match, EO Sky. 
comes to the ring, cashing in her Money in the Bank contract and immediately defeating Bianca Belair. If this was the intent from the beginning, if this was the plan, then it was a blessing in disguise and EO Sky could potentially be a good world champion. Finally, finishing it up, Roman Reigns defeating Jey Uso in a tribal combat match for the Undisputed Universal Championship. I highly doubt WWE was going to drop that belt to Jey Uso. Uh, especially with Roman Reigns being the champion, his match at Mania with Cody, then you had Jey Uso and all this stuff, and Jimmy Uso. Uh, the only thing that got me was it took both Solo Sequoia and Jimmy Uso under a hood to take down Jay. I don't think they should have immediately exposed Jimmy as being the guy under the hood, as that could have been an angle all to itself. Triple threats, like I said, for championships, they barely work. In this case, you know, it worked out. It wasn't the best that I'd seen for WWE. However, for the most part, SummerSlam was watchable. It wasn't that bad. Like I said, the biggest fault that I had was the MMA match, which could have been a whole lot better, and the triple threat women's match. Well, guys, it is time. Let's take a look and play some. A look back with Mike Trivia. Question for the day. Who was the original Smash in Demolition? The answer to the question coming up later on in the segment. Guys, if you would like to submit a question, for a look back with Mike Trivia, I'm going to go ahead and tell you now how you can do that. You can go on Facebook and send a message to my private messenger. Or you can go to the A Look Back with Mike Facebook page and send a message there. You can go on Instagram, send a message. Or you can find me on Twitter at ALBW Mike. It's very easily done. If you want your question asked for a trivia question, hey, I'm up for it. Like I said, guys, in a couple of days, this weekend, August the 12th, at the Madison Civic Center, All-Star Wrestling West Virginia is going to be having their summer heat, oh baby, on August 12th, like I say, uh, going to be a meet and greet starting at 5 p.m., bell time at 7, reserve seating is $20, general admission is $15, and tickets are available at Mike's Tire in Madison, West Virginia. Uh, Follow ASW Wrestling on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash all-star wrestling WV on Twitter or X at AS Wrestling and on Instagram at AS Wrestling WV. It's going to be something else, guys. That meet and greet is lined up. Uh, going to have Axe and Smash. Barry Darso and Bill Eady will be there. Going to have Dr. D. David Schultz, Fodder. Angelina Love, Heath, and all the stars of All-Star Wrestling will be on hand to meet and greet the fans. The card is going to be spectacular. ASW Tag Team Champions, D.D. Trash with Glamorous Gary versus Working Class. ASW Women's Champion, Judy Ray versus Sydney Powers. NWA star, Angelina Love versus Nurse Micah. Aaron West versus Vinny Pacifico. Jack Sharp versus Duke Wales. SRO versus Super Oprah, Nick Mothmans, and Johnny Buff, and newly crowned ASW heavyweight champion Heath versus NWA star Psycho Boy Fodder with Psycho Girl Angelina Love in his corner. Guys, Gary Dameron is doing a great job with this. He has done so for many years and continues to do so. He and the crew of ASW, you can't ask for nothing better. He always puts on a great show. But I really look forward to that, and it's going to be a great time for you to bring your kids. Uh, it's family-friendly. You cannot ask for a better environment to do something with the kids. Again, ASW All-Star Wrestling, West Virginia, 
summer heat. Oh, baby, going to be on fire this weekend, August 12th, 2023, at the Madison Civic Center in Madison, West Virginia. I'll have a link to ASW's Facebook page in the comments if you want to go on there and check them out. <sighs> Guys, it's been awesome. I really thank you all. Here is your a look back with Mike trivia answer. Who was the original smash in Demolition? The answer to the question is Randy Colley, who was also Moondog Rex. Randy Colley uh, was replaced by Barry Darso because with Randy Colley, uh, he was noticeable even under the paint, and fans would actually chant Moondog at him. That, that was why Randy Colley didn't last as smash, but we ended up with Bill Eady and Barry Darso. Great tag team. They held the championship on three occasions, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm wrong, I'll put it in the comments box. But in any event, actually, I do have some footage of Randy Colley as Smash and their demolition debut on WWE versus a couple of guys. Uh, we'll go ahead and play that. I'll put the link to that in the comments box. If you got a question, about how I get these or where to find them, check the comments box. The link will be there. And we will go ahead and get this started. So I'm going to count back from three to one. When I say push play now, on the word now, push play. Three, two, one, push play now. At a total combined weight of 499 pounds. Introducing from Italy, John Vapore del Lugmo. His partner from Lucas, Toronto, Mario Valentini. And their opponents are being led towards the ring by their manager, Johnny V, hailing from Point Unknown, at a total combined weight of 500. 67 pounds here on Axe and Smash. There you see Axe and Smash Demolition with Luscious Johnny Valiant. Johnny Valiant was a tag team great in his own right with handsome Jimmy Valiant. Guys, this speaks for itself. I'm not too sure. Take a look at that. I mean, they look alike. Bruno could use a pet gear like that. Why is that? <laughs> Based on your head gear that we open up the show with. Hey, wait, wait a minute, McMahon. I'll tell you something. Why you, Bruno, Okerlund, and all the rest, you don't have the problem I face. I have to go around in top needle to keep women away from me. That's why I dress this way. Wait a minute. Look at I'm not too sure about what the... I think that's the gentleman they call I'm not too sure, but what he looks a little bit better with the, with the mask on. <laughs> These are awesome looking men. Look at that. Look at the color of the hair. <laughs> I wonder if Johnny V does their makeup. Ah, uh, there's no telling what Johnny V does. You can bet Johnny V has high aspirations for this tag team combination. Johnny V, boy, they're powerful looking men. Now, now which one sat in the ring right there, McMahon? That, let me see, that's that. With authority. Look at this, just hammering away. Johnny B, wondering how the new tag team combination will fare as compared to Valentine's Eve stick earlier on. Here with the comments of Johnny V. It's the JV, Johnny V's tag team called the Demolition, baby. Can you imagine this? Think about it, Grandma. You got Valentine and Beefcake on one hand. You got the Demolition on the other. If the left one don't get you, baby, the right one will. Johnny V was two extraordinary tag teams. I'll tell you, that's pretty profound, and I got to agree with him, McMahon. Oh, wait a minute. This is the first time we've seen the demolition. And look at Balomo and Man Mancini haven't done a thing. Another great World Wrestling Federation event is coming to Lowell, Massachusetts, and the Lowell Memorial Auditorium. Now, the date will be Wednesday, February 4th. 
a ready sign to appear will be well the Duke of Dorchester will be there Pete Doherty a ladies tag team encounter you'll see Corporal Kirchner and also the Birdman Coco Beware all at the Lowell Memorial Auditorium in Lowell on the date of Wednesday February 4th Johnny V big foul in his face there passing about the outside of the ring I'd be smiling too to the outside that's that, that, that right there, right? That's that. Okay. Oh, my! That is chopping away. Down the room now. The father of Mancini coming over to help out. And Flash, the legal man in the ring, I believe, is now, I don't know what a foul, helping Mancini or hurting him by pushing back through those ropes. Mancini off the rope. Ooh, my! Whoa! Ramming his fist into the sternum area, tagging out back. Oh no. <laughs> and boom! Wow! With a cover. And a big out. I'll tell you, I'm impressed. How about you, Bruno? No question about it. They're awesome. They're big, they're powerful, and they're mean. Johnny me in the tag team combination, he refers to as demolition. Now, the long is just dragging uh, Mancini's partner over like he was a uh, some sort of carcass or something from the outback. Look at look at the eyes on Smash. Who are the winners? Demolition. That's uh, Smash. And I. Uh, let's go back to the replay. Take a look at the way they polished off your opponent. Look at this. This is that stuff he's coming out with that 300-pound weight. Look at that elbow right on the neck of Mancini. I mean, he completely turned him over, and there's the pin. And that, again, is why we ended up with Barry Darshaw instead of Randy Collins. SummerSlam yeah. left us with more questions than answers. It was it was a good program, but uh, coming up this week again, we'll All-Star Wrestling West Virginia is going to have their summer heat. Madison, West Virginia. If you have any questions, shoot Gary Dameron a message, All-Star Wrestling. Uh, he'll be able to answer those for you. If you have any questions that you would like, ask on a look back with Mike Trivia. I'd be more than happy to give them a shot if you can get them to me. I'm on my social media at ALBW Mike. Uh, that's Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. I'm on there. Shoot me a message. We'll get you on. Again, guys, thank you all so much for dropping by. I couldn't do this without you. Really and honestly, it's been great. Thank you all so much for this edition of A Look Back. God bless you all. And until next time, so long from the Bluegrass State.